A boom, chicka boom. I said 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 a boom, look at that cock up walking on the street. Chicka boom, look at that cock up walking the street. I was trying to do a song about a rooster. What is that? I was imagining a big rooster with a wow. giant butt. Josh! My word. <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions in Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to support us on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter account. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the I re button. I it really helps was. out the algorithm. I really was. I, I wasn't doing a double entendre with the intentionality. I was I was picturing a rooster <laughs> walking down the street with a giant butt, and his butt cheeks were doing this when you're saying chick a boom. <laughs> Get it? Chick a boom. Happy birthday to Irfan Khan. Yep. Never uh, forgotten. The late, great Irfan Khan, one of the greatest actors of all time. Yep. Uh, but today, a new video dropped by the channel... Say that? Yeah, uh, Commune India. Commune India. And this is, I believe, a speech by his son, uh, Bab Babil, is it, Babil Khan. Is the proper... Uh, yeah, is it Babil or Babil? Babil. I want to honor the name properly, and I don't, I don't know. know how it's properly pronounced. But this is, uh, it's called, it's a speech of his called Baba, My Best Friend. Uh, and I believe it's a tribute for Irfan Khan's birthday. It just dropped uh, on their channel. Uh, and they asked us to check it out and anything involving Irfan, we would love to do. And also him, which we saw in, Ka uh, in Kala. Kala or Kila. Uh, Kula. I don't know. I, we might be British pronouncing because a lot, of, when we said it in like the thing, a lot of people spelled it K-A-L-A, so I don't know if it's... Instead of a Q? Yeah, I don't know if it's... That's weird. Pronounced differently? Maybe. In India? I don't know. I, usually Indrani corrects me if I pronounce something wrong. I don't remember her doing... Every time I mention SRK's new movie... Patan? Yeah, she's... What did she say? It's more like... Patan? Patan. Patan. Yeah. yeah. That makes Dun. sense. Not Pathan? Yeah, I call it Pathan. <laughs> she's, Pat, she's just... Is that Pathan? Yeah. Hey, I won't go see that SRK film Pathan. <laughs> Anyways, but this is a little Shah Rukh uh, Khan spoken fest of 2022. So maybe a spoken word, little speech. Um, so here we go. And also, let us know what the next Irfan Khan film should be. Yeah, we uh, we have seen them all. We've seen a lot, but we have a lot uh, to get to as well. Here we go. I'm like, are you ready? And Baba looked at me he's like, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm like, I'm ready. Jaldabazi kya hai? Baba was. Papa's around forever. He's going to be around forever. And I was uh, lonely Mowgli again. It's going to make me sad. Yeah. <laughs> I was a weird kid, man, when I was growing up. And I think, I think that's because my parents kept me away. Um, not from anything in specific, just everything in general, like conventions, societal norms, saturated food, friends, people a normal education, just everything. And uh, at first I did have friends. I had friends and I lived in a regular community with people that went to regular schools with regular boards like CBSC, IGCSE and all of that. And I, on the other hand, went to a school which taught the Rudolf Steiner education system. Basically, while my friends were studying geography, maths, history, I was learning how to climb trees and pluck jamun from the tree I have just climbed. So obviously, like, my friends, they started to realize that I was a little different from them. And uh, they didn't like me very much. And Baba caught on to that. He saw that, so he bought a house in Mud Island. And he moved us away from people and the city. And I loved it for a little while, because I lived in the jungle, you know. And I was Mowgli in the jungle, and mm. I... I swam in lakes, I took naps on the branches of trees, and I broke the windows of abandoned house with my football. And I proclaimed the land to be my kingdom, you know. But then I got bored, because I would share those adventures with Baba, who was my best friend. But he was a busy man, he was filming all the time, and when he was not there, I would, uh, I would have nobody to talk to. So I thought, there's uh, nothing I can do. I have only one option. I need to take this issue up with God. And I did tell God that I'm lonely. So one day after his night shoot, Baba came back and I was like, Baba, uh, I want to pray. I want to talk to God. I want to meet God. Where is he? So Baba was like, okay, we'll go. We'll go meet God. 
Baba got the car ready the next day and he put me in the car and we left for Igatpuri. Two hours from my house, we reached Igatpuri, Baba's farmhouse. He took me to the stream next to our, uh, next to the house. And uh, he told me wear your swimming trunks, which I always carried with me in, when I traveled in case there was ever an opportunity to swim. And uh, he said, wear them. So I wore them and I was ready because I was going to go meet God. So I was like, are you ready? And Baba looked at me, he was like, I'm ready, are you ready? I was like, I'm ready. And then, <laughs> then he laid me on the water with my back on the water. So I was floating with my back and he let me go. And as soon as the river started to take me, I hesitated. I splashed around and tried to regain control, right? Baba pulled me off the water, he said, exercise over, we try again tomorrow. For nine days straight, this man has put me on the water, with my back on the water, he's let me go. And for nine days straight, I've hesitated. I've splashed around, tried to regain control. And every day we try again. But on the 10th day, I was bored. I had lost all interest in meeting God. I just wanted to go back to my kingdom. So I was like, what the hell? And on the 10th day, I didn't hesitate. I didn't try to regain control. And I allowed the river to take me. Baba watched me float away. And as, as soon as like, I think a rock was about to hit my head, he lifted me off the water and he said, today you have prayed. Today you surrendered. Today you met God. Hmm. I was 10 years old. I just looked at him like, what the f <laughs> you stupid individual, you're wasting my time. Then I turned 16 and, uh, you know, I, I went back to the city and I moved into a private school and for the first time in my life, I experienced the social perks of being a movie star's son because everybody wanted to be my friend suddenly. I bet. I have had, like, I never had friends. Suddenly everyone wanted to be my friend. And these friends that I had longed for for so long, they had these expectations of me, like of who I was and how I lived. And I did not want to let them down, no matter what. I couldn't let these new friends down. So, and I was not like them. I was Mowgli, you know, I, I, I couldn't relate, but I didn't care. I was ready to make changes. So, I started buying expensive clothes and I started riding around in Baba's big fuck off SUV and <laughs> I started partying relentlessly and I started hanging out with models. I was getting uh, invited by all the nightclubs and I was charging for appearances just to fund my lifestyle and I loved it. I, I loved it so much. Oh my God. And Baba and I, in this time, we became a little distant. We stopped hanging out. And every time he would come to me and he would tell me, like, he would make an attempt to bond, I would, I, would, I would dismiss him. Because fulfilling these hopes that my friends had of me, I felt validated. You know, I felt like I was doing a good job at being myself. And Baba, somehow he caught on to the desire that I want to be an actor. So he'd come to me and when he'd miss me too much, he'd just with the sweetest smile on his face, he'd be like, Baba, come, we'll, we'll practice a scene. We'll break the scene down and you do the scene with me. And I would shrug him off and then in desperation, he'd be like, And I'd be like, it's okay, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. I mean, what's the, what's the hurry? You know what I mean? Like, what is Baba was... Baba's around forever. He's going to be around forever. Baba's going to be around forever. So then, uh, life decided that it had different plans. Life decided that it was time for Baba to move on from this world. And then, Baba, my bestest friend, my my soulmate, the only friend that I never had to change myself to fit in with, disappeared forever from my life. When that happened, a strange indifference settled within me. 
the same uh, I mean I was being all these things for my friends and the same pretension that I loved so much exhausted me now I didn't I couldn't find the will to you know satiate within these friends the idea of me so this lifestyle that I had created it, it dissolved and uh, my friends <laughs> after offering me some sympathy for my loss they stopped hanging out mm. and i was uh, lonely mogli again back when baba used to go filming and i and i didn't have anybody to talk to man as if things just seemed like it was spiraling out of my control you know and at the absolute absolute breaking point of my spirit i i went back to the place the baba and i had once come to find god and i went to the river bank and i sat at the river bank and the sun had just settled so the sky was violet my feet were dipped into the water and i said i said pa i can't i can't find the ground beneath my feet and at that time i heard a voice in my head Baba's voice and Baba's words on the tenth day of our exercise, and he said, "Today you surrender. Today you surrender." And so my heart loosened its grip. And after all these years, now sitting at that river bank again, finally I understood what Baba was trying to teach me that day. And so I allowed the river to take me. Thank you. Wow. Mm. What a great shot. Wow. Well, that makes you sad. <laughs> <laughs> makes me want to go spend time with Lord to done filming. Goodbye. <laughs> Gonna go spend time with my son. Yeah, it makes me. My, my son just spent yeah. the night last night, so we were sleeping side by side. Um, yeah, it, and it says it speaks volumes. Not a surprise. The old, the old adage of the you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, the transparency and the honesty and the vulnerability. Um, beautiful gift. He didn't have to share that with us. No. At all, but the fact that he did. And on a side note, we talk about it a lot the pros and the cons and this two sided coin of quote unquote nepotism. I wish everybody would just stop talking about it. I really do. It's such a petty, low frequency nothing because you hear what he said about I suddenly had all the friends. It was because it was Irfan's son. And then when Irfan was gone, <laughs> He had nothing to offer them anymore because they weren't true friends who loved him for who he was. They only loved him because he was connected to his dad. Mm -hmm. And no one should have to go through that kind of crap. And he has these, you know, <laughs> uh, he probably appreciates it <clears throat> far more now. But man, to have Irfan Khan saying, let's work on a scene together. Yeah, right. And your thoughts are. Yeah, I'd rather go do something else. He's just his dad. Exactly. It's he just never, his dad. It's just his dad. He was never like, oh, of course not. Movie star. No, dad. It's, it's, it's it'd dad. Be that, it'd be that way with anybody. If, if, if you know, if, <laughs> say it's some, someday Aaron Judge has a kid and he's wanting to have a catch with the kid and the kid's, dad, I don't want to have a catch right now. Like, that, you know what your dad is? Yeah, he's my dad. Yeah. And it goes to show, I've, I've asked friends of mine, and I already had Leland at the time, but I was like, I always try to want to be the best parent I can be, obviously. And I think my generation is doing, I feel like, a really good job at raising children. The ones that are having kids, there's not a lot that are having kids, right. obviously. Yeah. But they're the first generation that are actually dealing with the traumas of their life and talking to their kids about, because obviously, obviously, I know you did this with your kids, but like people of your generation and older, and obviously. Older did not talk to their yeah. kids about things. They my just... dad is a freak of nature, man. My dad is a boomer. 
who was and always has been raw, naked, open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I feel like my generation has started to do that with their my mom children too. My mom too. Accepting the kids for who they are and letting them be whatever they want to be and mm. talking to them and letting them be vulnerable, show emotions, whether they're a boy or a girl and all the kind of, but I've asked like, um, friends of mine, I was like, what, what would you, if you decide or if you don't, or if, what advice would you give to people that you would want to give to somebody about to be a parent? Mm. Just none of them have kids is people I'm talking to. And they're just like, just be there. Mm hmm. Be have, there and have be no yourself. Have no expectations. And no agenda. For your children. Just they, all kids want you to do is be present and, and love them and be there for yes. them. Yes. And if, you're, if you just do your best at being yourself and let them be themselves, greatest example of that is watching. A, I, one of the things I find interesting, and it, this may not be a big deal, but one of the most intriguing things to me is discovering whether a child is right-handed, left-handed, or ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. I remember when I noticed Micah was heavily left-handed. It was so intriguing. And it was one of those things of how many other ways is this human being going to be different for me and different than what I expected. Mm -hmm. Our friends Mickey and Joanna, their son's ambidextrous, very clearly ambidextrous. He's using both hands. And... It's that I feel like Irfan was that way specifically because of the fact that his son simply asked the question, I want to meet God. Mm -hmm. And Irfan took him seriously, mm -hmm. pretty damn seriously Yeah, to go and do that for 10 days, that that level of intentionality and allowing. And I guarantee had his son had whatever response to the floating down the river thing. Irfan would have just accepted it as his son's experience. He wouldn't have judged him for it. He yeah. wouldn't have told him his experience was wrong. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed that he's had the balls to go after acting. Yeah. With the kind of light of comparison that would be on him. Yeah. And the experiences he's had of the grossness of people wanting to suck off you parasitically. Yeah. And then add to it a very Irfan kind of open heart to mm -hmm. the world, I'm very, very excited yeah. about what the future holds for him. Um, you know, if like, obviously when... His dad would be proud. Some When kids' parents die, obviously, and they were like, oh, I would love to have him back for one day. It's not so he could go and everybody would be, oh, no. oh yeah, I'm Irfan Khan's son. It's so you could, he would probably just be like, I just want to hug you. There's not a, <laughs> not a day that goes by where Andrani doesn't wish her dad was still around. He mm -hmm. died when she was 15. And even with all the turmoil we've gone through with my dad recently, mm -hmm. she said, and rightly so, she said, but you've, you still have him. Mm -hmm. Yep. So hearts, hearts to all those who have lost a parent yeah. at a very young age. And uh, again, love him. Big fan. Can't wait to see. What he does, what next. he gets to do, yeah, yeah as an actor. Fantastic video, great video, uh, fantastic speech by you, uh, Mr. Khan. Uh, bubble, 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 people. yeah, bubble, bubble. I'm gonna know. guess bubble, but I want to know for sure. And uh, what should be our next Irfan Khan film? Well, there's quite a few we still haven't got to. He had one that one with uh, SRK, um, Hindi, Hindi Medium, we still haven't seen, yeah. Um, there's the Quab Quab single or something like that. It's called. There's so many other that one with blackmail. I think with Rishi, he, like, he has a, he has a lot that we still haven't gotten to. Yeah, and I'm I'm realizing, you know, we had the honor of being one of the first people to hear some of Irfan's last words when we were at that premiere. Mm -hmm. They played an audio from Irfan apologizing that he couldn't be there for the premiere of the film and thanking everybody for being there. And I remember uh, now, even in retrospect. I also remember talking about him, you know, with the people we were with. Mm -hmm. And it was very evident by just looks on faces and the silences that the eminent was was coming. So we were we, on the one hand, just devastated he's gone and we don't have more work and we didn't fall in love with him even earlier. Mm -hmm. But grateful we've had the opportunity that we've had. Absolutely. But we want to watch everything he's done. Absolutely. So please let us know what the next one should be down below. Just